Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we'll take a look at this time-lapse camera and print server for FDM 3D printers. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the Beagle, or Beagle print, I've seen it both ways. It's a Wi-Fi connected print server with a camera, so you can monitor your printer, and it records time lapses, and it's adorable, and it costs about 70 bucks. Oh, also, I need to mention that Mintian sent this to me for the purpose of testing and providing feedback and ultimately showing to you. Yes, Mintian is the name of the company that makes it, so I mentioned it. Okay, so what problem is the Beagle trying to solve? Well, it's trying to make it easy to get your FDM 3D printer Wi-Fi connected and app controlled so you can send G-code files to it for printing, keep an eye on the printer while it's printing, and record some really sweet time lapses during the process. And it's trying to do it as cheaply as possible. On their webpage, they're comparing it to a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint with a USB webcam and also to the Creality Smart Kit, which is that Creality Wi-Fi box with a USB webcam. At 70 bucks, it's just a few bucks more than the Creality thing, and oh my heck, have you seen the cost of a Raspberry Pi these days? A few years ago, I bought a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus for under 40 bucks. And a little more recently, I bought an entire Raspberry Pi 4B kit with a case and power supply and micro SD card and everything for right about 100. Anyway, I guess what I'm getting at is the Raspberry Pi is no longer the low cost single board computer it once was. I mean, you can get entire Windows laptops for less. Okay, back to the Beagle. The Beagle connects to your Wi-Fi network and then via USB to your 3D printer. In my case, I'm using an Ender 3. It comes with a power adapter, a USB-C cable to connect that adapter to the Beagle itself, and a USB-A to USB micro B cable to connect to the printer. With this older Ender 3, though, I needed a USB-A to micro USB cable, so I grabbed one from my USB cable box. To set up the Beagle, download the Beagle Print mobile app from your device's app store. The mobile app is great for watching the camera and controlling the printer. It lets you set the bed and hot end temperature, see the actual temperatures on a graph, move the X, Y, and Z axes, start and stop prints, and view time lapses. Once you've got the app installed, register an account with them. Then plug the Beagle into power and into the printer. There's no power switch, so once the Beagle is connected to power, it will start up. And because it only has two status LEDs and no screen, it uses English voice prompts to let you know what's going on. So on first power up, it'll say something like, Camera is ready for AP configuration. From that point, follow their instructions in the quick start manual to get it set up. Basically, it amounts to connecting your mobile device to the Beagle's own Wi-Fi network and giving it the information it needs so it can connect to your Wi-Fi network. Once that's been set, the Beagle restarts and if all went well, it'll say Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. Positioning the Beagle can be a bit frustrating. Like most Beagles, it's not the tallest dog in the kennel. In fact, it can barely see over the top of the printer's bed. So a bit of searching on your favorite 3D model site can turn up a few useful prints that let you attach the Beagle to the printer. First, I tried this one, snaps onto the left side, and holds the camera out toward the front of the printer. Now this one works pretty well, but for taller models, you may not be able to get the entire thing in the shot. Another one I tried is this one that mounts to the top of the frame. Now this one was a little better for being able to get a whole model in the shot, but it's best suited for a mostly top-down shot. In the end, what I'm using is a small camera arm that I got on Amazon a few years ago, along with a tiny printable adapter I designed that lets me attach the Beagle to a quarter-inch camera mount. And for lighting, I'm using a USB-powered ring light. For me, this is the most easily positioned solution and gives me the freedom to put the Beagle anywhere I need to get the kind of shot that I want. But as you can see, it's not the most elegant conglomeration of wires and equipment. 
Of course, all that messiness is behind the lens, so if you're getting this rig specifically to make time lapses of 3D prints, it's no big deal. Happily, you're not limited to using the mobile app to interact with the Beagle. It also has a web server built into it, and you get a lot of options with that one too. Your computer has to be on the same Wi-Fi network as the Beagle, and you have to know the Beagle's IP address. You can find its address in the mobile app's camera information panel, and once you've got that, you can type the IP address into your web browser and connect to the Beagle. It has a default username of admin and a password of admin. Once you're connected, you'll see something like this. There's a connect button, and that tells BeaglePrint to connect to the printer. If it says disconnect, that means BeaglePrint is already connected. On the left side, there are six categories. Dashboard, time-lapse videos, 2D review, 3D review, G-code reading, and setting. Dashboard is the view you see after logging in. It shows the camera feed and has tabs below that to let you see and control the printer's status, view and set the hot end and bed temperature, and upload and select files to print. So here in the printable files list, let's upload a file. Click the upload button, then select a G-code file and it'll be uploaded to the Beagle. Before we print it though, let's take a quick trip over to settings and then in there, time-lapse videos. Currently, this is turned on, which is kind of what I want. The video codec defaults to H.264, and the other option is MJPEG. I find that MJPEG gives me a better quality video, but I have to convert it with a video transcoder so I can play it back on my computer. So for ease of use, it's probably best to leave it at H.264. I like to set the FPS or frames per second up to 25, so I get smoother video. Everything else, I just leave at the default settings and it seems to work. If you made any changes, click the Save button to save them. Now let's go back to the dashboard and then the printable files list. I'm going to select that file I uploaded a minute ago and print it. So I'll click on the little 2D printer icon in that group of four buttons on the right side of its row and it'll start printing. On every layer, the beagle will move the bed forward and the tool head to the left and take a picture. Then it'll continue printing. So here's the resulting time lapse from that file. It's uh, okay. I'll show you another one I did, printing MacGyver's Calid Dragon at 200% scale. For this one, I set the Beagle to capture in MJPEG instead of H.264, and I think the quality is better. But like I said earlier, I have to convert these using a video transcoder to get them in a format my computer likes to play back. I've also printed Loopy 3D's Aria Dragon a few times and gotten good time lapses of those too. One thing to note about the time lapses though, because the printer has to stop and move the tool head away from the print, wait half a second and come back to the print, you can end up with little bumps and zits on the print as a result of filament oozing out of the nozzle in that brief interval. Now these can easily be clipped away with flush cutters though, so it's not a huge deal. I just wanted you to know it could happen. So, I want to share with you some of the things I like and don't like about the Beagle, starting with things I like. Some of the feedback I provided during testing has resulted in bugs being fixed or slight changes made to the product. For instance, the base on the unit I received is super lightweight and didn't have any rubber feet. That caused it to be hard to position because the whole thing could slide around on the table. So they've told me they're adding feet and weight to the base to fix that issue. The early firmware had problems parsing certain G-code files, so I provided those files to my contact at Mention, and they were able to update the firmware to fix that problem. So I like that they've been responsive to feedback. The Beagle's mobile app makes it easy to start printing G-code files that have already been uploaded, monitor their progress, and stop them if you see a problem, even if you're not home with your printer. Also, there are printable mounts for it to give different camera angles for monitoring or time-lapse videos. So now, here are some of the things I don't like. The Beagle's tilt hinge can be a little bit floppy and won't always hold its angle. The Beagle is compatible with a lot of FDM 3D printers, but not all. The Beagle's mobile app on iOS seems to have trouble uploading G-code files. For me, they get 99% uploaded and then stop. Uploading G-code files works most reliably for me when done via the Beagle's built-in web server. Also, I noticed the Beagle seems to need a lot of light to see in color, otherwise it'll click over to black and white mode. So that's the Beagle. 
While the software still has a few rough edges, it mostly accomplishes what it sets out to do. And Mention is taking feedback seriously, fixing bugs, rolling out new firmware and app versions, and making it compatible with more printers. Is it worth getting? Well, there are worse things you could spend 70 bucks on. It does create time-lapse videos of 3D prints, and it's not difficult to use. And the cute puppy design is rather fetching. But it doesn't offer the depth and breadth of features that Octoprint on the Raspberry Pi does either. I guess it's a matter of your comfort level with technology and how much you're willing to spend. And if the Beagle does appeal to you, check out the list of compatible printers on their site to make sure yours is on the list. Well, 3D printing prints, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool and maybe make a time lapse of it. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you could do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well. That's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.